So on this channel, I've primarily talked about finding the best ETFs for maximizing dividend income. But the one thing we haven't discussed is how you as an individual can generate income for yourself. And this brings me to the wheel strategy. Now, this is not a day trading, scalping, or a swing trading video. I want to focus on a more passive route, one that is especially beneficial for retirees. And there are many income strategies, like the very common covered call strategy, which for those who don't know, involves selling call options against stock that you already own. And the key here is that you already own the stock. But the one issue I've always had with the covered call strategy is that your underlying position on the stock or ETF is bearish. So a covered call strategy is essentially a short position. But I'll be honest, in general, I personally prefer to be bullish as opposed to bearish. And you'll find that the overall market sentiment is positive majority of the time, especially over long periods. Stock markets tend to have an upward bias driven by economic growth and corporate profits among other things. Of course, this upward movement is not continuous and markets can experience periods of volatility, corrections, and even bear markets where prices decline. So a covered call strategy is limiting the upside potential of your holdings by trying to cushion the downside through income generation. So what if you don't want to take a bearish stance? What if you want to remain bullish and still collect premium income? Also, what if you don't own the stock or the stock you currently own is too expensive and you don't really feel like buying more shares now because some kind of correction is probable? This is where the wheel strategy comes in. The wheel strategy is an options trading strategy used by investors who have a goal of generating income and acquiring an underlying asset at a reduced cost. The strategy is often used by investors who are bullish on a stock or an ETF and are willing to buy it at a predetermined price if the option they sold is exercised. So in order to use this strategy, you must want to not only generate income, but also want to own the stock at a predetermined price that you decide. These are the two most important factors to remember. You must want to own the stock. I've been a very big fan of this strategy and I've been using it regularly to maintain market exposure and to consistently generate income on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis. So how does this work? Okay, we're going to go over a hypothetical example and run it through different scenarios. And of course, most importantly, go over the risks associated with the strategy so that you have a thorough understanding. I'll also go over some important tips and tricks to use. So to begin, here's a basic overview of how the wheel strategy works. Now, if you guys are enjoying this content and find it helpful, please do me a little favor and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out my channel and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Let's move on. First, you sell cash secured puts. So an investor will choose a stock or an ETF and sell put option contracts. So here's where a variety of very important details come in, such as the strike price, the expiration date, liquidity, and volatility. For every put option that you sell, you must have enough funds to be assigned 100 shares of stock. So if a stock sits at $400 and you decide to sell a put option at a strike price of $350, you must have at least $35,000 in your account. This is where a very important trick comes in, which is finding assets that are trading at a relatively cheaper stock price. So my rule of thumb is targeting stocks that are between $50 to $300. This way you can use the strategy without putting up a substantial amount of capital. But you can use this on any stock price. It strictly depends on the size of your account. This is also why stock splits are a fantastic thing for investors who use the wheel strategy. So how do you find these cheaper stocks? I mean, there's just so many to choose from and you cannot possibly search them one by one. What I like to do is use finviz.com, which allows me to sift through the stocks and set a variety of different filters, including stock price. And there are some other very important filters that you can use, but I'll go through them one by one as we move along. Next is the strike price. This is the price at which you're willing to buy the asset if assigned. And this is probably the most important aspect of the strategy. Now I'm going to go over assignment in just a second. The strike price has a major impact on the amount of premium income you collect. Here's an example on Apple. You can clearly see that the further out of the money you go, the lower the premium is. It's very important to note that when you're dealing with put options, it is the opposite of call options. So when I say out of the money, it is below the current price of the stock. Now, I do wanna remind you guys that the platform that I use throughout this video for research and analysis is Seeking Alpha. And currently you can get $50 off their premium plan by using the link in the description down below. Now back to the video. The third is the expiration date. So when you sell an option contract, you have the freedom to choose the expiration date. It could either be a short time frame, like one week or two weeks, or it could be a much longer time frame, like a month to six months. The shorter the time frame, the less premium income you will collect. Very important to remember. Going back to the Apple example, you can see that as I increase the expiration date, the premium income for a put option contract with a strike price that is at the money increases. 
Also, remember that the effects of time decay are a lot more pronounced for shorter term contracts. All option contracts suffer from time decay, which depletes the value of the contract as you get closer and closer to the expiration date. And the closer you get, the faster the rate of decline. And you can see that right here under theta, which is the option Greek used to represent time decay. You can see that as the expiration time increases, the effects of theta decrease. So that is the basics surrounding the first portion of the strategy, which leads us into the second half. Now, the platform that I'm using here to break down the wheel strategy and showcase the options chain is Interactive Brokers. If you want to go ahead and check out the platform for yourself, I've attached the link in the description down below. First, when choosing a stock for the strategy, you must consider liquidity and volatility. Stocks with optimal liquidity ensure that you can execute your trades efficiently without experiencing significant price movements or slippage. Stocks with larger market caps will tend to have more activity across all their related financial instruments, including options translating to a higher volume, making it easier for you to sell puts and receive a fair premium. Now, factors like volume and open interest are important because they tie into liquidity. However, those are more geared towards active day traders. But if you're curious on how to use it, I would be more than happy to make a video on it. So let me know in the comments down below. This leads us into another set of filters to add along with stock price, and that is market cap. Now, volatility is also a very important factor to consider because it affects the amount of premium that you collect. Option premiums and volatility have a positive correlation. So if a stock is subject to higher volatility, then the premium income that you receive will be substantially more. But at the same time, you will be subject to higher levels of risk. For example, if you want to trade the wheel strategy on Tesla versus Coca-Cola, well, the income from selling a put option that is 5% out of the money is going to be vastly different from one another. And volatility is another filter that you can add to sift out favorable stocks for the strategy. Now, there's also a very important added benefit of using large cap stocks, and that is reputation. This isn't a filter, but rather something that investors need to analyze on their own. So in general, you want to find stocks that exhibit an overall historical positive and consistent trend. And you want to avoid speculative stocks that have a very irregular chart pattern with very high exponential peaks and extremely low bottoms that are like 50% apart. This is also where using ETFs is very beneficial because they are typically not subject to a lot of volatility, like dividend ETFs. So small cap and medium cap stocks and ETFs tend to have these types of patterns, but reputable companies that have a track record of positive and regular chart patterns over a long period of time are ideal candidates for this strategy. This ties into the biggest risk with the strategy, which I'll explain in just a second. So now that you understand the first portion, which is selling the put, there are three different scenarios that can happen. The first one is that the stock can continue moving upwards, closing at a price significantly higher than the strike price you initially chose by the expiration. For example, Apple currently sits at $180, and I decide to sell a put option at a strike price of $170 with two weeks to expiration. I collect, let's say, $100 in premium, and by the end of two weeks, Apple sits at $190. In this scenario, you can simply hold the option until expiration, where it will expire worthless because it is out of the money. Or in other words, you get to keep all of the premium income that you've collected. Now, maybe you want to close the position before expiration, or do what's called rolling the option, and not collect the full premium, maybe try a different trade. This is where you would buy back the put option for a cheaper price. But the ease at which you'd be able to do this heavily depends on liquidity, which circles back to finding stocks with large market caps. The second scenario is the stock remains flat, and the closing price by expiration is more or less the same. So going back to our example, by the end of two weeks, Apple closes at $179. In this situation, it is no different than the first one as long as your put contract expires out of the money. And what caused the decline in value of your put contract is time decay. And the third and final scenario we have is the stock falls and by expiration it closes below the strike price that you sold the put contract. This is where you get assigned shares of stock at the strike price that you chose. So going back to the example, let's say that Apple closed at $165 at the end of two weeks. Now I am obligated to purchase 100 shares of Apple at a price of $170. And therefore by Monday, I will have 100 shares of Apple in my portfolio. And I say Monday because all options expire on Friday, so by Monday I will be assigned. And this is great because I wanted to buy Apple at $170 per share as opposed to $180 per share. And at the same time, I've collected a $100 premium doing so. Now, one of two things can happen here. Either you're happy with the assignment of shares and you simply want to hold on to the Apple shares, which you're more than welcome to do so. But if you decide to move on with the wheel strategy, this is where you would use a covered call. So now you will sell a call option at the same strike price that you sold the put option. 
that is key. So now what's happened here is that you're going to collect another set of premium in addition to what you've already collected from selling the put option. After you sell the call option, the same three scenarios take place, but the outcomes are flipped. In scenario one, the stock price can jump back to $180 or any price that is above $170 by expiration, but now the call options will expire in the money. And as a result, by expiration, you will be obligated to sell 100 shares of stock at $170 for each call option that you sold. So you've suffered no losses in terms of share price and you've collected two sets of premium income, one from the put option that you sold and the other from the call option that you sold. But what's very interesting to keep in mind is that the call option is much closer to the money than the initial put option. When you sold the put option, in this example, it was more than 5.5% out of the money, but the call option is only 3% out of the money, which means that you're collecting a substantially higher amount of premium income when you get to this part of the strategy. Now for the call option, you can choose a strike price that is further out of the money, but it should never go below the strike price that you chose in the the beginning, meaning you wouldn't sell a put option of $170 and then sell a call option of $168. You do not go below $170, otherwise you lose money. So now all you have is more money and no more shares, which is awesome. In the second scenario, Apple's price stays flat and remains below your $170 call option strike price by expiration. In this scenario, the call option will expire out of the money. So above the closing price of the stock. Now you're basically doing a covered call strategy where you're collecting the premium income, but you're still holding on to the 100 shares of stock that you've been assigned. And you can simply just continue selling calls at that same strike price and continue collecting premium income until the stock rallies back up, closing above $170. In the third scenario, the stock continues to drop, which brings us to the biggest risk with this strategy. Essentially, if a stock continues to drop lower, the premium income that you'll receive from selling those call options is going to keep falling and falling because now it is further and further out of the money. So there's two things you can do. One is to keep selling those call options, but after a certain point, it's best to simply sit back and just let it be until the stock price retraces back up a little, which is where you can sell the call options once again and collect a significant premium. And it's up to you to decide when the premium income is substantial enough. It could be in line with your monthly or annual goals. This is where we circle back to finding stocks with a long-term reputation because you want to minimize the risk of this happening. So if you have a stock that has overall very strong momentum, is reputable, has strong financials, earnings and earnings forecasts, and a large market cap, then you're protecting yourself from a falling knife. Very important. But there's also another thing you can do, and that is to use what's called rolling down. Just like someone would buy a stock of their choosing when it goes on sale in order to dollar cost average, you can do the same thing with the wheel strategy. Going back to our example again, Let's say that Apple closes all the way down at $150 in two weeks. So you've been assigned shares at $170. What you can do now is sell another put option but with a lower strike price than the initial one you chose, for example at $148, and your goal is to get assigned again. What this will do is bring down the average price of the shares or in another sense, dollar cost averaging. At this point, you can sell a put option at a strike price of $148 and collect a substantial amount of premium. So now your average price if you're assigned is the average between 170 and 148, equaling to around $159. And what you can do now is sell the call options at a strike price of $159 rather than $170, allowing you to collect not only more premium, but also give you the ability to offload the shares at a price that is more likely to be reached. Now, I know that that was a lot to take in, but I will be making another video that will explain how you can use technical analysis to find optimal stocks and appropriate strike prices so that the process isn't a blind decision. That essentially sums everything up. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer everything. <laughs> and that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.